All right, fastest way to become a Shopify developer in 2022. This time, we're going to be focusing on the three stages of going from zero to your first few thousands in projects, then how you can get to a consistent 10K per month, and how you can take it from there if you want to scale this into an agency or service business, doing a million per year or more in revenue. So the stakes are high. And if you're new here, my name is Jan. I personally went from mechanical engineering to freelancing, then also worked as a developer in Germany's fastest growing Shopify agency for about two years. And nowadays we're running a bootcamp where we help our students master these first two stages all day long, five days a week. So I honestly think the following roadmap is going to be really good and it can save you a bunch of time by just avoiding the same mistakes that I did. And if you would still like to get some more personal guidance after this video, then there's going to be a link in the description, gets you to a type form, you can answer a few questions about yourself, and then I will just send you an email telling you exactly what I'd be doing or what I'd be focusing on if I was in your situation. Sounds good? Awesome. So then let's have a look. All right. So then stage one, you're starting from absolute scratch and you know nothing about coding yet, but you want to make the first few thousands in projects. The few things I'll be focusing on here would be a learning the technical basics and we will go over these here in a second. Then after that, B immediately start applying for the first simple projects, the projects at your level of comfort. And yes, they exist. Just got to know where to look for them. And then C, you want to do it fast because yeah, first of all, none of us have un unlimited motivation. So the faster you can build up some momentum, get your first results, hear great feedback, see the websites you're building, the better because it just drastically reduces your chances of quitting. And then, yeah, second, I mean, obviously it's also important to get paid because we all need income to survive, but especially in the beginning, the highest leverage you have or the most valuable thing you have really is your time. And the sooner you're able to go full time in on this, like on your own schedule, doing work you truly enjoy with your undivided attention, that's when your learnings and your income as a developer gets to a much higher level for the very first time. And there's a different important thing on each of the stages, but for the first one, yeah, it's definitely your time and undivided attention. So the faster we get there, the better. Okay, now in terms of the technical skills, my recommendation would be to start with HTML and CSS. And you don't have to be a master with this, but up to a point where you understand how a website is structured. Maybe you can build a small section or a small landing page. You know how to create a layout. You know how to arrange containers. So very foundational things like that. The next thing I would then learn is how to work with a platform. And if we're talking Shopify development, obviously that's going to be Shopify. But the reason here is very simple, because if you compare a completely custom built website where like 100% is custom code, everything is built from scratch with a Shopify based website, you will find that 60% is already taken care of by the platform. So these are things that every online store needs, things like payments, customer accounts, login systems, security, um, card system, things like that. Another 20% can then be custom configured. These are things like products, collections, setting up a theme, setting up shipping zones, things that have to be adjusted on a per client basis. And coding is only needed for these last 20%. So these are things that are not included per default or if you want to make some very custom design changes. But the main benefit here is that you don't have to learn all of programming at once. You can just focus on that tiny bit which is required for these 20%. And I think a solid understanding of HTML and CSS will already get you quite far. Beyond that, I also still think e-commerce is a great niche to get started with. Because, for example, if you build an online store, you do some work, your client sells more of their products, they make money and therefore your services are directly valuable to them. And it's always a good thing if the value you create can be measured to some capacity, because then it's also easier to charge adequate prices in return. All right, so that's it for the technical side of things. And now, how do you go about applying for the first simple projects? First of all, I think you should build yourself a portfolio website. So this is where you present yourself as a freelancer. You present the skills you have as well as the services you want to offer. And here are also some tips. Ideally have a video or at least a photo of yourself just to be more relatable. Main call to action should be to get in touch. Have a contact form. State the services you want to offer. And then also ideally have some demo projects related to the services you want to offer. Yeah, please don't put your, here's my JavaScript calculator kind of thing on the website. 
your clients don't want a calculator. I'm sure they have one. So yeah, should be e-commerce related. And if you've spent the last few weeks learning, I'm sure you have a few things. And if not, you could even build some projects specifically with that intent and then just replace them over time with real world work that you do. Okay, now with that in place, we also need to find a way to get in touch with potential clients. And there are different strategies depending on your personality. So for example, you could start on your personal network and ask friends and family or even post your portfolio page on your socials because maybe you already have a friend who might need your help. That would be the easiest. You could also look for e-commerce or Shopify related meetups in your city. Just go there, talk to some merchants in person and also grab the free snacks. So there's every reason to go there. You could start answering questions on Facebook groups or on the forum for free. And the next thing you know is people will ask you for follow up projects. Um, I think answering for free also takes off the edge a bit because no one expects perfect quality if it's for free, but you would still get a feeling for the feedback you get and then thereby build your confidence. You can also try to use freelancing platforms. In the beginning, I would recommend Upwork. If you have a professional looking profile there and you also communicate well, that's a very predictable way of getting your first clients. Or you can also do some direct outreach to business owners with maybe very outdated websites and then propose to help them with a remake. So I would recommend you just pick the one or two that you like best and then stick with them. And in the process, you will learn so much about sales and marketing, how to present yourself, how to communicate, how to write emails, what to say on a call, how to price your projects. And in the beginning, you will also, yeah, it's very likely that you will underbid some jobs, but that's perfectly cool because you're still learning, but now it's at least paid learning, hands-on, on the job, instead of just memorizing things. All right, now what I've seen counters of times now is that when people get to the 3K per month mark, they tend to get stuck. And now the question becomes, yeah, how can we surpass that? How can we get to the next stage? How can we get to a consistent 10K per month? And earlier when we talked about how in the beginning time is the most valuable thing you have, because it's kind of proportional. The more time you put in, the more you learn, the more you make. Um, now it's a different story because, yeah, unfortunately we can't just repeat that process forever. You can't always put in 10 times more work and then get 10 times the results. You will, you will run out of time pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, now we have to find ways to apply some leverage. The question is no longer, how can I put in more time? The question is, how can I make the most of my time? And since at that point, you've already proven your problem solving abilities, I think the only things you should be focusing on are better pricing and better clients. And we can even break it down. If you want to make 10K per month, that's 2300 per week. And if your hourly rate is 35, then you would have to work 65 hours per week. But if your hourly rate is 100, then you would only need to work 23 hours per week. Yeah, so that shows how pricing can give you very high leverage on your time. And at that point, it might be a good idea to look into some pricing strategies. Maybe you want to experiment with ongoing support packages, maybe fixed pricing for your projects. So you could charge 2300, 3600, maybe 5K for a store setup instead of billing by the hour. Um, so yeah, you might want to look into how to structure proposals and different pricing strategies. Now, as for better clients, that mainly means they can afford your services. So here I'd be looking for more established brands. Um, I think they should make at least multiple five figures per year in revenue. So that could be something like 60 or 80,000 per year or above. And that's mainly because these companies want to grow. They have some money to invest. And interestingly enough, oftentimes it's also easier to work with someone who wants to go from 80 to 100,000 per year than it would be to work with someone going from zero to their first 20,000. Although it's the same absolute difference, but the one starting at 80 might already have better work ethics. They might have some marketing skills. They might have worked with other developers in the past and then they deliver assets faster. And it's just a more professional work relationship. And then also given that you've been working like for a while now, you should have some reviews, testimonials, case studies, uh, projects, and that will make it way easier to get in touch with these brands now. So yeah, main things to focus on in this stage would be better pricing and better clients. And if you're currently struggling with that, make sure to fill out the type form down below. I might have some ideas here as well. All right, now you have access to good clients. Your pricing is great. How do you take it from there and build this into a business doing a million per year in revenue? This is where it gets really interesting. And I think in order to make that, three different components have to come together. First of all, your offer, then sales and marketing, and some component of fulfillment slash customer support. 
And in terms of your offer, I think now is a good time to specialize because the easiest way to make a million in revenue is not by doing many different things. It's by doing one thing or a very few things and then repeating them over and over again. And you can actually calculate how many times you have to do a thing. And that will also back up my point why it's important to specialize in a second. But first, let's have a look at the numbers and break it down. So if you want to make 1 million in total sales and you have an offer that's worth 100,000, you would only need to sell this to 10 people. If you have an offer worth 10,000, then you would need to sell this to 100 people. If you have one that's worth 5K, it would be 200 people. If it would be 2K, it would be 500 people. If it would be 1,000, then you would need to sell this to 1,000 customers. And if you have a very low ticket offer, maybe something like 50 bucks, then you would need to have 20,000 customers per year. Or if we're looking at a software, it might be 50 per month, then you would need to have 1,600 active users. Now, this might be very different for everyone, but personally, I feel very comfortable creating packages in the one to $5,000 range because that's where I feel I can provide a lot of value for the money people spend. And also two, three, four, maybe 500 customers, that seems a lot more doable to me than let's say 20,000. And personally, I, also don't, I don't have much experience in the enterprise range. I don't even know how sales cycles look exactly. Um, but yeah, as I said, this might be different for everyone and also depending on your background. Okay, now given you wanna do something three, four, 500 times per year, I think at this stage, it's also very likely that you will need a team. And that's the type of leverage you can apply at this stage. So in the beginning, it was putting in more time, then it was better pricing to make the most of your time. And now it's deploying some capital to bring in other people and thereby creating even more leverage. The problem though at this stage is that usually you can't afford the people who are straight up better than you. So you might bring in people who are a bit less experienced and then you have to provide some training for them, documents, processes, give them structure and manage the team. So this is not freeing up your time. You will only be able to get more done. And it's also why I think it's so important to specialize because it's just way easier to create these structures, processes, documents, if you only have one or a few things to focus on. And it will also help you to become more efficient. You can become really good at the one thing you do and thereby create better results for your customers, get more testimonials, reviews, which also helps with marketing. And it's way easier to get to know your ideal client, dial in your marketing message. So there are actually tons of benefits to specialization at this stage. Then the last variable that we haven't touched on yet is the marketing and sales pipeline. So this is people hearing about your offer for the very first time. And then also the process of converting them into a customer. I mean, two, three, four, five hundred 500 customers, they have to come from somewhere. But there are only a handful of ways to do this. Um, the only ones I could think of were organic content, paid advertisements, affiliate marketing, outbound and referral. I might be missing something here, but these were the ones that came to mind. And you can just pick one of these and then build your sales process around that to establish the constant flow of leads that you need. And these were the three variables, your offer, marketing and sales, and fulfillment slash your team. And that's it. Anyways, that's it for today's video. We've seen the three stages and what to focus on at each. First, it's learning the basics and being able to go full time. Then it's better pricing and better clients. And then it's building structure, building a team and specialization. I really hope you can use this roadmap and I actually spend a lot of time thinking about these things. And as I said, if you need help, check out the Typeform link in the description. Advice is always going to be for free and we only sell the implementation. That is, if you need help with putting things into action or want more personal guidance. And yeah, really hope you find some value in that. Have an amazing rest of your day. I'm going to catch you in the next one. Peace.